What's up tweenerheads? Welcome back to another tweenerhead tennis video here with Phil and today welcome to my channel If you are new to the channel and haven't been here before Hi, my name's Phil and this is where we talk about tennis in a more casual way for you guys to find out what's going on on and off the court Now today we are going to be talking about a piece of gear that just recently launched and it's called the Stycon the Adidas laceless the first laceless tennis shoe to come out from Adidas now before we get started I would just like to preface with saying happy Australian Open. Who you guys are rooting for at this year's Australian Open. So leave a comment down below of who you think is going to win. Now back to the shoe. Adidas just released its new 2020 line with this year's Australian Open with a laceless shoe called the Stycon. The Stycon meaning the stylish... What, is it? what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Stands for stability, style, and icon. Now, it is pretty stylish, I will have to admit. And I just want to make a disclaimer before this. I do not own the shoes. I have not personally tested these shoes. I'm just giving a personal opinion and take on the first laceless shoes. Now, I personally think these look don't look that bad. I kind of like the look of it. The color looks good. The all black looks good. But at the same time, the shoes look like Kanye's slipper. If anyone has thought of that before, it just looks like that. <laughs> I mean, it's a good looking shoe, don't get me wrong. I think what people don't also realize is Adidas has been doing this for years. Adidas did this back in 2014 or, it was either 2014, 15 or 16, where they came out with the Adidas Predator when they went laceless. A first with the Adidas brand coming in from a different sport. So this is not the first time Adidas has made a laceless shoe. This is just the first time they're doing it in tennis. Adidas came out with this laceless shoe where it comes up on the sock of the ankle, giving you a little bit more support, and it comes completely indulged with one sock and not even a lace inside. It comes with bands on the inside that goes from one end of the edge of your foot to the other to make sure it provides stability and comfort for people while they're moving. I do want to say, though, that this is technically not the first laceless shoe in tennis. Last year, K-Swiss released its Aero Knit version of its shoe, which looks laceless, but there are laces on the inside of the shoe. That way you can tighten it a little bit more if your, shoe, if your foot feels too loose. As well as Nike Aero Knits that Rafa was wearing during the Rome Open last year, and it looks basically like a scuba shoe. So I think... But I did think K-Swiss shoe did look a little bit better than the Nike one. The Nike one did come with a zipper. And personally, just wasn't my taste. Just wasn't my taste. That's just me. When I first started hearing about these laceless shoes, I did look on Tennis Warehouse and Tennis Express to see if there was a review out. And there was from Tennis Warehouse where you do see a little bit of action from side to side. As well as up and down movement that they're using with the shoe. As well as looking at the ankle support that it provides. As well as the grip it provides on court. Now, I just want to break down to see what what I was thinking when I was watching these videos of someone using the shoes. First of all, I just want to point out the side-to-side -side movement looks very fluid like any other tennis shoe. And it's able to push off a little bit more with ease, which is looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. I do want to say in this video, who in their right mind is sliding so hard that they have to push off with their hand to the ground. I have never, I've gotten low on the court before, but never in my life have I gone to the ground where I'm do, where it looks like I'm doing suicides on the court with a racket in hand. I've never seen that before. They also go on in the review to say that, well, the demo instructor said that he usually uses two socks when it comes to going through your daily routine of playing tennis when you put on two socks prevents blisters i did that when i was a kid but this time he only used one and he needed a shoehorn to use for the sh for the stycon now the stycon they say it comes with a shoehorn for you to have to get your foot into it but for me it's a little tricky to look at that in a positive way just because i want my shoes on fast i want my shoes on quick and then i want to tie my shoes because it's a part of the routine. And I think as any tennis player, you'll realize that just changing a little bit in your routine is something to get that you're used to and something that you need to get used to when you try something new like a shoe without laces. And what if your size doesn't feel comfortable? What if your size doesn't feel good 
when it comes to the size of the shoe when you order it online and you've never tried them on before. So if they're too big, they might not attach to your feet or grasp your feet as much as they, you want to with the bands on the inside. That's why I think the Aeronit did a better job with having the laces on the inside where you can just tighten it so that way the laces don't flop around. Or instead of having this, you could just have Sissipass's idea where Adidas just makes a shoe a lace guard so that way your laces don't break all the time. And speaking about Sissipass, he originally had the Stycon shoes during the ATP Cup and he is the main promoter for these laceless shoes. Now, I did see Sissipass use them for his first couple of matches with the Stycon shoes, but then later on switched back to his normal shoes with laces. Which is interesting because you would think a very creative and ahead of the time person like Sissipass would want to keep using the Stycons. And before I move on to price point compared to all the other Adidas shoes, I just want to point out if you look at the ankle support on some of the shoe on the shoe itself. I'm just wondering if that's going to bother anyone because it's not like in soccer where you this, you want your ankle to be that stable so that way you don't turn it over. And I think it's similar to tennis. You don't want to slide and then roll your ankle. But in tennis, you want it in soccer, you want it that high so that way you can protect it from people hitting your foot, stepping on it, rolling over on it, and you're slide tackling a lot. So it kind of helps that perspective, helps on that perspective. But in tennis, when you're moving that much on a lateral movement when he's moving side to side and you see him squish that bit into the foot i don't know if that would bother anyone or not if you have these shoes please let me know i'd love to hear your opinions on them let's move on to the price point of this icon now compared to the other shoes the cheapest adidas shoe that they have on sale for tennis is the soul court with the bounce then it becomes the ubersonic threes and then the Stycons, which is 140 Now that's not the most expensive shoe that they have to offer because in today's market, tennis shoes can range from 100 to 130 if they're new, 140 if they're the newest shoe out. But then the Stycons at 140 and then it's 160 for the Soul Court with Boost technology. Now, Stycon not making it the most expensive but also not making it the cheapest because they wanted to make it uh, very exclusive it looks like just by the way they're doing it and advertising it as a the first laceless shoe of tennis but for the price point i think it's worth it because it's very new it's very unique and it's very out there for the tennis world so i think that's definitely fits within the price point of the shoe i would probably do it kind of as a fashion statement if anything i would try them out on the court but i don't think i would wear them on the court personally i would have to see how they would work first but this is kind of like the predators in soccer you guys let me know what you guys think of the new stycons the first laceless i'm gonna say laceless shoes of tennis i'll say the first pure laceless shoes in the tennis world so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you are new to the channel like i said before feel free to hit that subscribe button. We are almost at 700 subscribers, so help us get there. And by the end of the year, I'm hoping we can get this channel to 1,000. So I hope you guys join the Tweenerhead Tennis family. And to follow us on more behind the scenes content, as well as keeping up with the Australian Open, check out all our social medias down in the description below, as well as our Patreon page, where you can get early access to all of our content. So make sure you go check out those guys, as well as our website at tweenerheadtennis.com. I hope to see you guys next time. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks, guys.